What is going on, everyone, and welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, the movie Freedom Edition. Why Freedom Edition? Well, today is the 19th of July, and that means in the UK, it is the day in which all lockdown, all pandemic restrictions are finally being lifted. Pretty much in the UK, at least, we're now exceptionally close to pre-COVID life. That means that no one is forced to wear masks. You can have groups of over six people. You can just, you know, live your life like the good old days back when there wasn't a deadly virus that killed loads of people. You know, the good old days. Anyway, to mark this momentous day, I thought I'd bring you guys another r slash entitled parents movie. This one mainly focusing on Karens out in the wild. You know, not locked inside, not online, out in the wilds and annoying people face to face. So for example, the first story in this mega long episode is about a Karen at the gym. And of course, today in the UK marks the reopening of gyms, which is just, you know, fantastic news. No mask required. Everyone have a great time. Now, of course, guys, I know this is only happening in the uk right now and you know other countries have different rules and they're going to open up at different times and also i know that a lot of you watching right now aren't from the uk in fact the majority of you watching are probably from america but i'm from the uk all right so i want to make this video here we go enjoy it guys Entitled parent calls the cops because I'm too skinny. So for some background, I'm a 16 year old male and I have a high metabolism. Now for everything I eat, I really don't gain that much weight. So I'm pretty skinny, 107 pounds. Now for those of you like me that uh, don't work in pounds, that is under 50 kilograms, about 48 and a half kilograms. So yeah, that is pretty light. This happened about two days ago. I live in a big city and my family and I don't go out to eat often because of COVID. But since everything is starting to calm down, we decided to go out and eat. As we were ordering, I see a lady with a Karen haircut. I joked to my brother, who's 19 years old, and we had a good old laugh. Little did we know, though, it was actually a Karen. Enter the entitlements. What do you mean you're out of chicken? One of the staff members dealing with this Karen said, I'm sorry, mom. The delivery hasn't come in yet. I don't care. I deserve this chicken right now. Give it to me or I'll call your manager and get you fired. Again, sorry, mom. The delivery will be here in three to four hours. I really can't control that. The entitled parent, still fuming, went off to the side and we ordered. I order, and that's when the entitled mum went off on me. What the F, kid? Why are you so skinny? Do you ever eat? Uh, I, I eat a lot, but I have a high metabolism, mum. I don't care. You need to eat more and gain weight. Uh, I don't care. A again, I eat a lot. I just don't gain that much weight. My brother then intervenes. Mum, leave my brother alone. He's telling the truth. Who the F do you think you are talking to me like that? I think I'm myself telling you to leave my brother alone. Oh yeah? Well, shut your freaking mouth, you dog. I'm calling the cops on you and your parents for starving this young boy. 50 minutes later, the cops arrived and asked what had happened. They took the entitled parent off to the side first and she claimed that my brother tried to assault her and that he kidnapped me and was starving me. Then they took my side of the story and I said that she's an old crazy bat because I was here with my brother and we're just trying to get some food to bring home for my family. I then explained my high metabolism and that my brother didn't even attempt to assault her and that if they wanted to check, they could ask the worker or just check the camera. So they asked the worker and checked the cameras. When they told the entitled parrot that there wasn't a problem, she went ballistic. She actually ended up kicking one of the officers in the privates. She got arrested for assault of an officer and we pressed charges for harassment. We're still waiting for the court dates. I mean, seriously, lady, I know 48 and a half kilograms or 107 pounds. That is genuinely very light for a 16 year old boy. There's no getting away from that. But still, some people do just have crazy high metabolisms and some people just like being skinny. Like, who knows? The guy might have been a runner, might have been crazy into his fitness. He's not necessarily malnourished just because he's lighter than you might think a typical 16 year old boy would be. Also, it's just none of your business at all, really. I mean, you've gone to enjoy a meal. You sit there, enjoy your meal. Let OP and his brother enjoy theirs. Everyone's good. If you really care that much, you can have a look at their table and see how much OP's eating. But it's none of your business. Again, leave it alone. Now moving on to our next story. This one is taken from r slash entitled people. Woman demands to know tragic backstory. 
This happened a couple of years back, but I still cringe when I remember it. Throughout my teens and early adulthood, I had it pretty rough. My mental health was not the greatest, and as a result of bad coping strategies, I have severe scarring throughout my body, most noticeably on my left arm. Due to the extent of the damage, literally hundreds of keloids, most people assume I was in an accident and have the good sense to avoid the topic. It's no secret to my friends, but it's not exactly something I'd like to discuss with strangers. And by the way, those of you that may not know, I didn't either. Keloids are a type of ray scar. They occur where the skin is healed after an injury. Okay, so that makes sense. Probably quite a noticeable, you know, ailment, I guess. A good friend of mine wanted to go shopping for clothes and asked me to tag along to keep her company. I think we were both in our early 20s at the time and I still had severe social anxiety. We were having a good time, but while she was in the changing room, I wandered off by myself to browse. A little kid comes up to me and asks what happened to my arm. Now, kids are curious, that's fine, but I'm not able to disclose the truth though, as I feel it's A, highly inappropriate and B, quite uncomfortable. So I tell him I'm not really comfortable saying and immediately start rifling through shirts to appear busy. The kid goes away and comes back, teary-eyed, with mum in tow. She demands I explain to her child exactly what happened to my arm as they are curious. The following conversation takes place. No, mum, I don't really feel comfortable talking about it. Please respect that. But my kid wants to know. That's all well and good, but I'm entitled to my privacy. What I understand is you're a rude, selfish, little... What followed was a veritable verbal battering as the woman got increasingly agitated and took turns calling me impolite and demanding answers. It escalated to her grabbing my arm and telling her kid to touch it as much as they wanted. At that point, I, already on the verge of a panic attack, started to freak out. I practically screamed at her. It doesn't matter whether I was a lion tamer or kidnapped by pirates. You don't get to know my life story just because you want to. My friend came back about then, having heard the commotion. She is a petite, soft-spoken creature, and I can count on one hand the number of times I've heard her raise her voice in the 30-plus years we've known each other, and I still have fingers left. She descended on these two like an avenging Valkyrie, and with language that would make a sailor blush, gave such a thorough verbal lashing, the lady was rendered momentarily speechless. We took the opportunity to leave and could hear her shouting about rude kids on the way out. I was a bit shaken up at the time, but to this day, we laugh about how bad of a lion tamer I must be. I hope for the kid's sake, their mum learned some chill though. Although that story didn't really involve much harm or violence or anything of that sort of ilk, it did involve one of the most entitled people that I can remember in my recent time of reading out stories. Genuinely, to go up to somebody and say, what happened to your arm? Then to say, you know what? I don't really want to tell you. I'm not really comfortable telling that sort of stuff to strangers. I kind of keep that between me and my family and my friends. And then to say, no, I don't care. Tell me. That's another level of entitlement. Genuinely, just thinking about that. That is... mental and then trying to you know go off and say oh these kids these days are so rude not telling me what serious thing happened to them that's the reason they've got loads of scars on their body like what what are you on about what sort of example are you setting to your kid that is a a madness seriously that is a crazy crazy story and now moving on to our final story of today's episode why would she work here if she's just going to act disabled So, for some context, I have a lot of mental issues tied with anxiety and pressure. When I get too overstimulated, I start to twitch, stutter, say intrusive thoughts out loud, hum and shake. At the time of this story, I was working at a popular fast food place. Before I had started working, I informed my boss and my managers I'd be working with about this and got permission to listen to music during work since I worked the fry station. The orders on the fry station came up on a little screen and I didn't really have to communicate with anyone as long as I was fast enough to get the orders through before they needed to ask. Normally, I would work with a pair of Bluetooth earbuds in, just loud enough to barely hear what was going on just in case I'd have to listen. However, these two girls I worked near would loudly talk about me, assuming that I couldn't hear. It was the normal stuff that I usually heard at work. Why does she get to listen to music and we don't? She must be their favorites, etc. Classic female dog stuff. One day, however, I realized that I'd accidentally left my earbuds at home. My manager that day was really sweet, but we were short-staffed and I didn't want to ask to go home and grab them. 
I also didn't have the guts to ask anyone if they had some I could borrow. So I decided to toughen it up and work my shift without them. Being in the kitchen without music was loud and the two girls gossiping really didn't help. I started to shake and hum already. However, since this was the first time they'd ever really gotten to talk to me during work, they jumped at the opportunity. We had a conversation that went something like this. The first female dog said to me, Hey, OP, can I ask a personal question? Shoots. What makes you so special that you can listen to music on earbuds, but we can't even play it out loud on our phones? I do fries and don't like talking. You don't do fries and do like talking. Then the second dog got involved. Are you saying we talk too much? No, I'm saying I don't like talking and I don't have to talk to you to do my job. I just think it's funny how you get to de-sucking female dog. Excuse me? What did you just call her? Our manager then walks in and she's heard the last bit at this point. Don't mind her. She can't help it. But she's never done this before. Look at her. She's acting like this to get out of work early since she doesn't have her special needs music today. Guys, that's really uncalled for. I just say wet paint. We just want to know why she would work here if she's just going to act disabled. I'm a college student on my own. I need a job to get wet paint food. Then the second female dog asked me, Are you just, in sir R word here, why don't you go on disability or something? At this point, my manager gets really mad and yells at them to stop. I'm breathing really heavy and I'm on the verge of a panic attack. So she takes me to the freezer in the back and has me a bag of liquid ice cream to squish. We've previously talked about how I enjoy the weird bag feeling and thought they were fun to hold. She also has a brother with similar problems to mine and knows that sensory stimulation is helpful to some. I don't know why squish squish ice cream bag is funny, but it is. She leaves and comes back a few minutes later and tells me that I can clock out for the night and not to worry about them. So I do. The next night i come back and the first female dog was put on a week long suspension and the second worker was fired as it was her final strike for causing workplace drama i mean once again i have no real issue with these two girls kind of you know asking the manager or asking uop how come you get to listen to your music whilst we don't because you know on a job i'd like to listen to music and if some of my co-workers were listening to music and i wasn't allowed to i probably want to know why so um that's completely fine but surely as soon as you like you know go to the manager and get an answer or ask op and they give you an answer you're like well okay that makes complete sense fair enough um you just get on with what you're doing and i'll leave you alone you don't go and do all this like madness and stuff abusing them and ending up getting fired and getting suspended and that sort of stuff which by the way they fully deserve for being so abusive surely at that point you just accept it i don't know i mean let put it this way would you rather have the issues that op has and be able to listen to music at work or would you not be allowed to listen to music at work but be completely fine i, I mean I, i'm not like being that deep about it i know which one i'd rather have <laughs> As long as OP is getting to do the work and is doing that okay and is able to deal with that even through their issues, then listening to music is a great thing. And yeah, I wouldn't substitute being completely okay and not having mental issues for having mental issues and then being allowed to listen to music. If that makes sense, OP's going through a lot right now. These two girls aren't. Let her be, surely. Entitled Dad nearly gets his daughter's arm torn to ribbons. For background, this happened last year while I was volunteering at a local zoo. I was heading to the lynx enclosure to feed them when I heard some commotion coming from where the caracals and servals were. For an idea on how the layout of the enclosures were designed, the medium-sized wildcats all each have a fence and a set of bars to separate them from the visitors with the fences on the outside as a way to signal people to avoid getting into scratching distance of the cats. I went there to check and there was a man, the entitled dad of this story, alongside a girl that looked to be around five or six who were both past the fence and the girl was sticking her arm inside the caracal enclosure. And one of the caracals was hissing and growling at them while a second one was sleeping on top of a cat tree-like structure that was built inside the enclosure. Hey, miss, please remove your arm from the cage, I say. The entitled dad replies, why? She just wants to pet the kitties. Sir, these animals are wild and they're clearly not enjoying her presence. Well, she likes cats, so she'll enjoy them anyways. Look, these aren't domesticated house cats. There are wild cats and they're not used to humans. Miss, 
Please step back now or you're gonna get hurt. After I raised my voice, the girl snapped her arm back and looked at me, crying. You will not threaten my daughter, the dad said. I'm not threatening her. I'm warning you that these cats are not suitable to be pets. A passerby intervened. She's right, you idiot. You're endangering your own child by letting her get this close with wild animals. I'm not endangering her. It's a cat. They like being pets. No, it's a caracal. They look like cats, but they're a completely different animal. You wouldn't let your daughter pet a bobcat, would you? Of course not. But this isn't a bobcat. It's like the same freaking thing, you idiot. There's a reason why these animals are behind cages and fences. Oh, F off. Daughter, you can pet that cat as much as you want. Don't listen to these idiots. At this point, the girl looks way too shaken from the conflict and doesn't want to pet the caracal anymore, thankfully. The man then stormed away with her while threatening to report me to my superiors, which he did. But thankfully, the zoo's obviously siding with me. And then I resumed the feeding schedule while the servals looked at me in your typical cat judgmental way after thanking the man that helped me stand up to the entitled dad. I've dealt with plenty of entitled people while working at the zoo. But holy F, I never thought I'd actually meet one that gets annoyed at me for not letting them touch a dangerous zoo animal. Yeah, I mean, that is just astonishing, really. Genuinely, like, what would his excuse have been had the caracal come over and actually bitten off his daughter's arm? Because let's be realistic. As OP says, they are completely wild animals. You're in a zoo. They're not trained. <laughs> They're in cages for a reason. What would he have done if the cat had just come over and said, you know what, screw this girl. I'm a wild animal. I'm going to eat her arm. You could have had no excuses, nothing to say, oh, you didn't warm me or anything. Just brainless. I, I just don't get it. Now moving on to our second post. Entitled mother does nothing when her kid lets his dog poop all over my lawn. Gets a nasty surprise in her mailbox. This happened about a year and a half ago, before the whole COVID thing. I had moved into a new home a few months ago, and one of the reasons I especially liked this home was because of its nice lots and close parks. Anyways, one day a few months after I moved in, I noticed that there was a piece of dog poop on my front lawn. I looked around and I didn't see anyone walking their dog. Quite a few of my neighbors had dogs, and I figured one of them had forgotten to pick up after their dog. I got a plastic bag and threw the poop in the trash, and I thought nothing of it. Imagine my surprise when, two days later, there was another dog poop on my lawn. This time, I saw the entitled kid of our story down the street walking his dog. I wasn't sure it was him, and his mother seemed kind of nice, so I thought I'd see if it happened again. A few days later, I was about to leave the house when I saw the entitled kid with his dog again dropping a steaming pile of poop onto my lawn. I took out my phone and recorded a video. And after I got back, I went to his house. His mum answered. Hello, miss. I'm sorry if I'm interrupting something, but I was just wondering if we could talk about your son and his dog. Of course. What's up? Well, I noticed your kid walking his dog outside my house and I saw that his dog um, pooped on my lawn and he never picked it up. He carries bags when he walks his dog and I'd appreciate it if you could ask him to pick up after his dog from now on. The entitled mum then switched into full entitlement mode. That's nonsense. My son would never do anything like that. Ask anyone. He's the most well-behaved child in this neighborhood. I'm sorry, miss. I'm not saying your son is a bad child or anything. I just want him to pick up after his dog. I even have a video of him walking away after his dog pooped on my lawn. <laughs> Fine, I will talk to him. Now go away. She slammed the door in my face, and I thought that would be the end of things. Boy, was I wrong. I didn't see the entitled kid walking his dog outside my house for a week or so after that. But around 10 days later, I saw another pile of poop on my lawn. I'd had enough now, and I went back to the entitled mum's house. Miss, this is really unacceptable. You said you'd talk to your son, and now there's another pile of poop on my lawn. That wasn't my son. He's an absolute angel. He said he'd never do it again, and he didn't. The kid then came to the door. Kid, did your dog poop on this man's lawn again? Obviously lying through his teeth, he said, No, never. Well, that should be enough for you. Now, don't come back again. I was having dinner at my new neighbor's house, and the topic of the entitled mum came up. My neighbor told me that pretty much everyone hated this lady as she was always borrowing stuff and claiming she never took it, filling other people's trash cans instead of paying for a special pickup. You get the idea. I finally broke when her dog pooped. Not once, not twice, but three times on my lawn in the same day. I got an epic idea. 
This time, I used a plastic bag to pick up the poop, but instead of throwing it in the trash, I kept it out in my backyard. For the next week, I collected poop from the lawn like a scientist, bagging everyone. I'm sure if someone saw me, they would have thought I was crazy. After a week, I had around four bags of the entitled kids dog's poop in my backyard. On Friday night, I went over to the mailbox of their house and absolutely caked it in their dog's poop. I got the sides, the top, the bottom. I completely covered the thing. The next day, I was treated to the sight of her husband hosing their mailbox off with a look of utter disgust on his face. After that, her kid mysteriously stopped walking his dog in front of my house. A nice little r slash entitled parents r slash petty revenge crossover there completely justified of course if you can't pick up after your dog to be quite frank you don't even deserve to own one it's just disgusting like there's a reason why it's the law in the vast majority of countries that i've ever been to anyway that you have to pick up after your dog and if you don't i know for sure in england this is the case you have to pay a pretty big fine if you are caught honestly go to the police next time this happens i mean clearly it's not going to happen again because of that fantastic revenge but if it ever does on the off chance go to the police in your area and let them know what's happening with the video footage honestly the entire family will have to pay a pretty big fine i'm pretty sure and it will be well well deserved and now moving on to our final story if you don't let me in my son's room i'm calling the police for some background i own a 32 unit facility that houses felons who have finished their sentences and need some help returning to society each unit houses two clients we do stuff like teach them computer skills and help them learn to cook put a resume stuff like that 6 a.m about two hours ago my night manager calls me and tells me there's a lady pounding on the front door insisting she needs to talk to whoever is in charge so i tell him to give her my number before i'm even off the phone with him she's calling me before i can even introduce myself she goes off accusing me of kidnapping her son this man is 34 years old and here 100 on his own free will and forcing him to work for me now he doesn't work for me he works at the recycling center then she goes into how as his mother she needs to see what kind of conditions he's living in but he refuses to let her visit according to her he would never refuse to see her unless he was under duress so what she needs demands that i do is to come to the facility and unlock his door so she can go in and look around i told her that that's not going to happen i'm not letting her into someone else's home she is not a resident here her son is not the only person who lives in that space and i would need permission from both her son and his roommate to let her in she has no right to be here now please get off of our property or we will have you trespassed this caused her to shriek how dare you into the phone and tell me that if she isn't let into the room within 10 minutes she was going to call the cops and have me charged with kidnapping i tell her go ahead and i hang up i wasn't at the facility but from the security camera footage it appears that when the cops that she had called showed up and she explained the situation to them her son came to the door and told the cops he didn't want to see her and that we didn't kidnap him she went into a rage and attacked her son but he didn't get hurt he just backed up and slammed the door the cops took her away i don't know what's going to happen to her but dang seeing that dude's mum, he didn't have a great start in life Oh my god, yeah, you're so right, OP. No wonder he's a convicted felon. If you've got a mother like that, Jesus, you're up, you're up against it, aren't you? When you're born into this world and you've got a parent like that who's meant to be looking after you and teaching you how to, how to be and live your life and how to act. And it's someone like that, yeah, there's no wonder that he ended up doing some criminal activity. The great news is, though, that he's obviously decided that he never wants to see this woman again for quite obvious reasons and is on the way back to rebuilding his life. He's in a really good place from now with good people like OP and I wish him the best and um, I wish his mother the worst. Entitled man gets angry at my mum for not getting a suit for cheap and then tries to steal it. Hey, guys. My mum used to have a job as a manager of a suit tailor and she told me about a time when a very annoying man walked in expecting a suit for a way too low price. So one day my mum was on her break when she overheard someone yell, this freaking shop, unbelievable. She quickly ran over and in her professional voice said, I'm sorry, sir. What's the problem? You're telling me that this is 200 quid? Yes. What the F? It should only be 50. Sir, here at our store, we offer the finest business suits. So this is practically a bargain. That is BS. A freaking bargain? If you're upset with our prices, then you should go somewhere else to buy it or just rent one. 
no, this one's the closest shop to my house and it's still far away. I'm sorry, sir, but there's nothing we can do. I recommend you leave. I would not leave until I get a suit. Sir, leave now or we will call the police. All right, fine. Trashy shop. My mum thought she was dealing with a mildly insane customer, but what he did next was insane. He grabbed the 200 pound suit and made a run for it. Now it's a good thing that there was a doorman watching the entire situation unfold. As soon as the thief tried to sprint out, he got tripped up by the doorman and gracefully fell over. He was knocked clean out. My mum didn't want to press charges against him, so now his reputation isn't that guy who got arrested for attempted robbery. Instead, now he has to live with the shame that he was tripped by a 55-year-old man after trying to steal a suit. I don't know about you guys, but I think £200 is, yeah, it's expensive, but I think it's a pretty reasonable price for a really nice suit, you know, a top-tier suit that you're only going to wear on special occasions. Not £50. I mean, £50 is a lot of money for a suit, kind of, but I mean, you wouldn't expect to get, you know, a nice designer suit for £50. That's just ludicrous. Then trying to steal it... Yeah, I mean, that's criminal. I, I really don't understand, OP, why you didn't press charges. That's what I would have done because, you know, it's not exactly pressing charges. It's more, you know, reporting something illegal where they were trying to steal a suit from your store. Seems obvious to me, but hey, you didn't. Your choice. Now, moving on to our next post. Entitled patient tried to lie to my boss about me, so I got her discharged from the hospital. I always listen to these stories on YouTube, and I never thought I would have a story to post here. But here I am. For context, I work in a hospital that specializes in elective surgeries. Therefore, a vast majority of the patients that come into my office are people willing to pay thousands of dollars out of pocket to fix physical but not life-threatening issues. My boss is considered the best in his field throughout the entire world, and it is particularly difficult to schedule an appointment with him unless it is months in advance. I received a phone call from this woman. Let's call her Entitled Jerk, and the conversation was as follows. Doctor's office, how can I help you? I need an appointment so I can schedule surgery, and I was told by the doctor through email to call to be scheduled next week. I'm confused. I I'm sorry, I'm not too certain what you're referring to. The doctor's not going to be in office next week, and their next availability for consultations is not until May. Wh what? Wh what are you talking about? They told me in the email to call and schedule it, and I'm a sitting judge, so I need an appointment next week. Okay, mom, give me one moment while I look into this. I put her on hold and walk into my supervisor's office and ask if my boss had sent word about a last-minute patient being added on that I was just unaware about. They say no, but to ask if the patient can forward the email so we can confirm that it was the boss who said that. This is a common practice in the office I work in, as there are instances where the boss talks to a patient but forgets to inform the staff. If we're overbooked for a day, my supervisor has to open a specific time frame in order to schedule any last minute patients. I then take her off hold. I'm sorry, mom, but are you able to forward the email to me? It doesn't seem that there's any record of you coming into our office for an earlier appointment. I just need to confirm before I schedule. For some reason, this statement activates some secret emotional bomb in the back of this woman's brain, and she immediately becomes more hostile. No, I will not. I'm a sitting judge, and you asking me this is extremely rude and unprofessional. I spoke to the doctor through email. Are you actually doubting me right now? Well, to be honest, yes. I can't believe this. I need to have surgery on this date and you're going to give it to me. I'm a thousand percent over this woman at this point. Okay, mom, I'm going to ask my boss to send me the email when he's out of the OR. So I'm unfortunately going to have to get back to you about your appointment dates. Thank you. And just as a word of advice, watch your tone the next time you speak to me. Okay, click. A few hours later, my boss comes back to the office and tells me they have received an email from the entitled jerk, saying that I was rude and unprofessional to her, and that I was refusing services to her because I wanted to invade her privacy and she said no. Luckily, the whole time I was on the phone with this patient, my supervisor was in my office listening to the entire call on speakerphone. Otherwise, no one would have been able to confirm that I was not being unreasonable and rude to this patient. My boss goes on to explain that they never promised an earlier appointment to her in the first place, but to check with the office to be put on the wait list for an earlier date. Now, knowing that the entitled jerk is nothing but a miserable liar that throws tantrums when no one believes her, I asked my boss if it was really worth it keeping her as a patient. 
To which he said, well, no. While I was happy with this decision, because I don't have to deal with this woman anymore, I felt bad for any other physician that is going to have to deal with this lady in future. What I didn't know at this point was that my supervisor called patient advocacy, essentially an HR that handles awful patients, and they agreed that her behavior warranted her not to be accepted as a patient by any physician within the hospital. So now my boss, supervisor, and I have to call her tomorrow to inform the hospital's decision to discharge her. Honestly, karma is not something you should F with. The major issue that i've got with this woman and by the way there's nothing wrong with asking for an earlier appointment that's absolutely fine it's just when you feel like you're more entitled to an earlier appointment because of your position because of who you are than other people ultimately if there isn't an earlier appointment you know to give to you that means someone else has that appointment theoretically then i guess this woman is saying you know what promote my appointment make me have my surgery first and we'll just delay someone else even if they might need it way more than this woman that's the major issue that i've got with her anyway in this story i mean not to mention the fact that she completely lied about having emailed your boss clearly that just didn't happen and that was just her way of trying to get an earlier appointment as well as you know flexing about her job but um yeah the the problem that i've got is that clearly in this situation if she was to get an earlier appointment if op and the doctor were gonna you know fold and say fine just come in early someone else would have to you know be sacrificed and that could be really dangerous who knows now moving on to our final story of today's entitled parents video karma hits entitled kevin i've heard that a kevin is the male version of a karen so that's what i'll be calling the main character of this story yeah i'm not sure about that op to be honest because i think a kevin is is more of a a person who just doesn't understand what is going on in the world has no common sense and makes truly awful crazy decisions but they don't mean it They're, they're not an entitled person i think chad is a better name for a male karen i mean to be fair if you guys have seen my videos on r slash stories about kevin you'll know that kevin's the name that we give them anyway are not entitled they're just dumb (laughs) but anyway op's called him kevin that's absolutely fine let's get into the story i've worked retail management for over a decade and i've dealt with my fair share of karens and kevins but this one particular kevin sticks out the setting of this is a retail drugstore chain he was always complaining about everything Everything from a customer smoking in the parking lot to having to wait five seconds for the cashier to acknowledge him. He once called me a greedy businesswoman when I refused to sell him the display model for a fan. There were plenty of those fans in their boxes. The main problem was that he needed our pharmacy. He took a multitude of prescriptions and he had our state's version of Medicaid insurance. Medicaid is government funded insurance for the low income. Although it's free, it comes with a lot of restrictions and paperwork. One of the main restrictions was it will only cover generic medications unless authorized by a doctor. To get this authorization, we faxed the doctor a TAR form. Kevin demanded we give him name brand, claiming the generics didn't work. Every time we explained to him that Medicaid doesn't cover name brand drugs. Every time we faxed his doctor a TAR form and every time his doctor rejected it. His doctor even asked us to please stop faxing him. Kevin swore we were trying to kill him and that he was going to sue us. He would specifically mention how high his blood pressure was and that this stress was worsening his cancer. We politely told him to call his insurance and to please take his business to our competitor across the street. Our competitor asked us to please stop sending him over because he was banned from their store. Several times he did call the Medicaid offices and they confirmed that they would only cover generics. That calmed him down for a month, but then it was back to being a Kevin. After over a year of dealing with Kevin, his attitude finally cost him. To get your prescription, you can either come inside the store and get in line, or you can go through the drive-thru, similar to fast food. This particular day, Kevin was in the drive-thru getting his prescriptions. Then he started to demand bread, milk, eggs, and other groceries. We told him that the drive-thru is for prescriptions only, but he kept demanding that we get him his groceries because he's old and disabled. After five minutes of him refusing to leave the store, my manager comes up and asks if we get him his things, would he please leave? Kevin said yes. Then it pretty much turned into a hostage situation. Kevin made more demands. The manager had enough and just decided to call the police. I was going to say, it's very risky even giving Kevin one thing that he's not supposed to have because surely at that point he's going to just ask for way more like he did right here. What happened next depends on who you believe. According to the police, when Kevin refused to leave, he appeared to be having a heart attack, so they dragged him out of his car. According to Kevin, the police took his keys away so he couldn't drive. 
Whatever happened, Kevin was in the back of a police car and his car was parked in the middle of our drive through We called a towing company to please remove his car. Kevin was unable to pay the impound fee, so he lost the car and had to rely on friends and public transport to get him everywhere. The irony I see in all of this, Kevin constantly complained about his blood pressure being too high. Maybe if he wasn't such a Kevin, his blood pressure might not have been so high and he'd still have his car. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear from this story that this Kevin just takes life way too seriously. I don't know if he's just that sort of person or whatever, but it doesn't really surprise me that someone like this has such a high blood pressure when they, you know, they just get so stressed about everything, make so many demands, put themselves in so many toxic situations. Like, I'm sorry, Kevin, but you're not really helping yourself, are you, pal? I mean, instantly at the start of the story when he's like, you know what? No, I don't want the normal medication that is covered under my insurance. I only want name brand stuff. Literally, it's the same medication Surely everyone knows this. It's the same medication just with different packaging. Maybe, you know, it's got a little bit of a different covering on it. It might be a bit sweeter or something, easier to swallow. doesn't matter. It's the same stuff. It has the same purpose and it does the same thing. I don't know why he cares so much. It's not going to change your life, Kevin. Just get what you're insured for for free. It's pretty simple. But no, he wanted to go above and beyond that. And um, then (laughs) the funny bit is when he started asking for groceries at a prescription drive-thru. That got me, not going to lie. But hey, maybe Kevin, this is all part of his big plan to just get drive through food seems unreasonable though doesn't it uh yeah what a weird bloke i got a male karen a chad arrested i a 20 year old woman run a retail store with only one other person another 20 year old woman and some guy came in and cussed at her literally the first thing he said to her was f you i immediately took over and told the man somewhere in his 50s i think that we wouldn't help him if he was going to be swearing at us He made fun of me for telling him he couldn't swear and I just ignored him and gave him the solution to the problem he was coming in about. I watched him run outside to his truck, check his back seat multiple times. Now this is important to remember. And after about 15 to 20 minutes, he came back in. He sat down and just glared at me. My coworker was helping someone else. I asked him what he needed. He said he'd tell me after our only other customer left. I told him he could tell me now, but he stood up and said, I will leave when she leaves. I responded saying, listen, I've been nothing but pleasant with you your entire time of being here and you've been incredibly hostile. I'm giving you two options. You can either talk to me right now so I can try to help you or you can leave because at this point, what you're doing, sitting down and saying nothing is loitering. He was fuming. He got right up in my face to intimidate me and gave me the most evil look I'd ever received. I stared right back at him. What's it gonna be? He broke eye contact and said, I'll leave. He walked out the door, but he didn't leave. He sat in the front of his truck and kept looking through our window at us, waiting for our only other customer to leave. I pointed this out to both my coworker and the customer, an older woman. The older woman told me to call the cops immediately and that the man was not mentally sound. I was hesitant, but she was right. I called the cops, but in the meantime, the man kept checking his back seat over and over again. When the cops arrived, they said hi to me first and then went outside to speak to the man. After about five minutes, I saw Mr. Karen trying to fight the cops. One of the cops came in later and told me the situation. So he's going to jail tonight. There was something in the back seat of his truck that he's going to jail for. He was actually a wanted man. Are you all good here? One of us can stay here if you don't feel safe. I told him we were fine. He had me write up a witness report. It really makes me wonder just what was in the back of this guy's truck. All right, then you lot, comment down below. What do you think exactly was in this guy's backseat? Most interesting slash, you know what? Funniest answer, funniest idea. I'll pin as the top comment in this video because, you know, I want to see the most ludicrous suggestion. What do you reckon someone would have in their backseat that they're so protective of for 15 to 20 minutes and then end up getting arrested over? I want to hear your funniest ideas. Let me know down below. Now for our second story, mum steals my tickets for her kid. This happened pre-COVID. I was at a Dave and Buster's with the husband for date nights. I'm playing one of those games where you shoot a coin down a slot and hope it results in pushing multiple other coins off the edge to get tickets. However, Dave and Buster's no longer gives tickets. You have to insert your game card when you're done playing to receive your ticket credits. I am the only one playing one of the machines. 
there are five other empty machines that others could sit and play at. All of a sudden, a woman is standing behind me and she says, Excuse me, but you've been playing this game a while. And my son, who is probably about six years old, deserves a turn. Of course, I point out that there are five other identical games available, but that's not good enough for her. She says, I see you have well over 400 points on this game. It's clearly the lucky one. I try to stick it out, but she's breathing like a dragon behind me. So I decide to leave. It's not worth it. I'm not even halfway out of my chair before the little kid is trying to get into it. No kidding, we touch butts as I'm sliding over. The mum pushes me out the way, and I say, Excuse me, but I need to put in my car to get my tickets. The freaking dog, though, takes her son's card and shoves it in, looks at me, and says, Sorry, he's playing now, and they are his tickets. You are clearly too old to be here anyway. A child deserves them more. I was 24 years old at the time, and this is DMB. It caters to adults. It's not some friggin' Chuck E. Cheese. Shout out Chuck E. Cheese, by the way. I remember when I went to America when I was young, and we went there a couple of times. Unbelievable spot. Now, I'm not one to cause a scene, but I'd spent a lot of my credits on that game. Of course, I went to security and threw a fit. They went over to the woman and told her she needs to let others take their tickets before playing. But of course, she played dumb. In the end, they gave me twice as many ticket credits as I was supposed to get, but they also let her keep the one she stole, most likely to avoid a huge blow up. I just can't believe how arrogant some people are. Yeah, uh, to be honest, guys, I'm pretty sure that was his mum's intention the entire time. Um, It's pretty obvious, really, in my opinion. She was just going for the tickets. That was it. I think it's pretty clear that she just made up some absolute bull about, oh, you've been on it for so long. Uh, this clear the lucky arcade machine. There are other machines and, and one's not going to be more lucky than other ones, is it? I mean, let's be realistic. It was just a great play to try and get some tickets, steal some tickets and get her kids something nice that he didn't earn. Pretty good stuff. Um, it's a shame, you know, because she actually got her way in the end. Yes, OP got twice as many tickets, which is great, but Karen still stole. Not great. Now moving on to our third story. Double book seats with an entitled couple on a 12 hour flight. Oh my God, that sounds horrific. This happened back when I was a kid, but there are stories here that reminded me of it. The situation. We were on a flight from Miami to Bolivia as a family of five with three kids under 12. We're getting on the flight, sat down, when an entitled woman and her entitled husband come up to my row. I'm sitting there in the same row as my brother and sister. The woman says to us, Excuse us, you're in our seats. Now me, my brother and my sister have all been well versed in child travel by this time. So we pull out our individual boarding passes and show her. We're also assigned these seats. The husband says, no, you're wrong. Let me see those. We don't give them over. My dad comes over to see why strangers are talking to us children. Excuse me, why are you talking to my kids? Or they're in our seats, look. That's their assigned seats. They know how to read a boarding pass. By this time, we've attracted the attention of the flight attendant, who confirms that indeed, those seats have been double booked. The entitled woman and her husband are irate, demanding their assigned seats. The flight attendant leaves to go, see what I can do for you. This whole time, the entitled woman is making a big show of trying to store her bag in front of ours in the overhead bins and complaining loudly. The flight attendant returns and says, thank you so much for your patience. It was double booked, but it looks like we have enough seats in first class available for your party. If you could please follow me. The entitled woman and her entitled husband sigh, relieved that finally someone will see reason. The woman gathers her bag and as her husband steps forward, the flight attendant holds up her hand. No, sir, not you. If you three, looking at me, my brother and sister, will please join us up in first class, we'll make sure you're taken care of. Oh, the lemon sucking look on the entitled woman's face as we politely grabbed our bags and moved to the coziest laps of luxury our young selves had the fortune of lucking out on. I remember the meal making me have a headache, but the reclining seats, warm blankets and sleep marks sure helped with all that suffering. Now, before reading the story, guys, I thought there was nothing better than a free upgrade to business class or first class on a plane when you've only paid for economy class tickets. But I was clearly wrong. What's even better is when you get the free upgrade and someone else who thinks they're going to get the free upgrade doesn't and they're entitled, arrogant and just overall not very nice. And you pretty much get to spit in their face as you make your way up to the front of the plane. Incredible scenes. 
wow uh, just an, an amazing story and uh yeah well done to those kids for being polite because honestly that's probably the reason why they got the seats and not the entitled couple the flight attendant was probably like you know what we have three seats here either we could give two to this arrogant horrible couple that are just picking on kids and being overall rude unnecessarily when i'm just trying to do my job or we'll give it to the three nice polite kids who were just sitting there being calm you know not causing a disturbance i wonder which one i'm gonna go for good stuff now moving on to our final story of today's episode karen and husband with no tickets demand to enter the gallery five minutes before closing so i worked at an art gallery that was mostly for vips but anyone could enter as long as they had tickets it's a pretty strict gallery and we only allow online booking we're always sold out so it's almost impossible to buy physical tickets for our last day the timings were only up to 7 p.m at quarter to seven, our manager told us that we cannot let people in anymore as we were already taking down some of the artwork that had been bought. We did still allow some of the people who had tickets in though. Now, mind you, before you get to the desk to scan your tickets, there would be ushers who would approach you and ask if you have tickets. In this case, the ushers were instructed to tell people that they cannot enter the gallery anymore. At around 6.50, 10 to seven, Karen and her annoying husband try to get inside. They talked to the ushers for at least five minutes and were very angry to hear that they were closing. By the way, they didn't even have tickets. The ushers just couldn't handle the Karen and her husband, so they sent them to the manager. What is this stupid system? Why aren't you letting us in? The manager responded, We're very sorry, but the gallery is only open to seven. We don't allow any more people in. Then why did your website say it's up to seven? said the husband. At this point, guys, it was already around 6.54 p.m. Yes, sir, we are only until 7. There are only five minutes until that, and even if I let you in, the guard just wouldn't let you in, to be honest. Then just tell them to let us in. You hired them, so you can tell them what to do. I'm also just staff here, sir. We were instructed that we cannot let people in anymore. Okay, listen here. Then why did you put on your website that it was until 7? You guys are giving us false information. This is bad service. We always go to restaurants before closing and they let us in every time. Listen here. Next time, if you're late to the movies and they don't let you win, then you'll know what we're feeling. And they both walk out. I just couldn't fathom how stupid and entitled some people can be. Like, who the heck doesn't understand what until 7 means? Anyway, the manager was really chill the whole time. Good thing Karen and her husband walked out, or else they'd get slammed on the floor by our guards, which would have been interesting to see. Well, uh, to be honest, after hearing that last line, I kind of wish they had, you know, put up more of a fight and said, you know what, no, we are coming in. We're, we're before seven. I'm coming in to see some lovely art uh, just so we could have enjoyed them, you know, getting slammed to the ground because that would have been fun, you know. Entitled people getting decked is what I personally live for. And I know a lot of you guys do too. So, um, yeah. Oh, well, maybe next time they'll be a little bit more entitled and we'll see them get absolutely shoved on their faces. Brilliant stuff. My mother ruined my graduation party. This happened a few years ago, but I was browsing Reddit and thinking about my mum, so I thought I would post it. This story is about me, an 18-year-old female at the time, my dad and my mum. They've been divorced for a very long time. My senior year, I was taking dual courses in college, so I was not that excited about my high school graduation. My dad and stepmom decided that they were going to throw me a small graduation party to celebrate. It was very small. Only my grandma and siblings were invited. It was more like a barbecue, to be honest. But I had no idea it was happening because they wanted to surprise me. My father reached out to my mother and told her that they were going to have a small thing for me and that she was welcome to come. My mother, though, became outraged that I did not call and personally invite her. She called me one night and screamed at me for a solid hour. Here is part of the conversation. Hey, mum, what's up? Why didn't you invite me to your party? What party? Your graduation party. Don't act like you don't know. I'm not having a graduation party. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Don't you lie to me. I know you're having a party and I want to know why you hate me so much. This is your graduation. I should be there. Mum, seriously, all I know about is the ceremony. And as far as I know, you've already been given an invitation. Fine, I won't come, but I just want you to know I care about you and it hurts to know you don't care about me I was upset and went to go and talk to my dad about it He said that he was sorry, but my stepmom and him were planning a surprise party He invited her to be nice, but didn't think she would react like that So it wasn't a surprise anymore 
but I was happy for the thought. A few days later was the graduation ceremony. After the ceremony, I met up with everyone up front for pictures in my cap and gown. My mum had purposefully dragged mascara down her cheek to make it look like she'd been sobbing. I knew it was on purpose because not only did she have a waterproof mascara, but her makeup was perfect despite the little bit running down her face. We took pictures and she refused to smile in any of them. She made sure that every picture she was in, she frowned as hard as she could and scrunched up her face. She looked like a toddler having a tantrum. She decided to not even go to the party afterwards. She did, however, call me every 20 minutes to express how left out of my life she felt. It was not a large party. It was fun and I have many smiling pictures of my dad and me. I mean, goodness me, if you're going to call OP every 20 minutes, you might as well have gone to the party. You're pretty much there already, woman. What the heck? I mean, seriously, though, it's so embarrassing ruining someone else's, your own daughter's graduation just because you're a little bit unhappy at the situation. I mean, first of all, there's that frowning in pictures, dragging your mascara down your face, acting sad when you're not really, you're just trying to ruin someone's day. And secondly, then ruining the surprise when you know it's a surprise because OP's dad would almost definitely have told you it's a surprise. Why? Why are you going out of your way to just ruin your own child's day on a pretty important day for them? Graduation's a big thing. Come on, what are you doing? Seriously, woman. Now moving on to our next post. No, Karen, I won't let you take my steak. So last year was my mum's 60th birthday. With lockdown, we couldn't do a big party, but instead I did a sushi distance meal for her, my dad and me. She wanted a steak dinner with all the trimmings. I went down to the supermarket a few days beforehand. Said supermarket has these specially cut steaks in vacuum packs and a deal of three for 10 pounds. I was choosing steaks and noticed a woman close by doing the same and picking up several. I took my three, put them in my trolley and moved on. I went along, got the remainder of my list, then thought of getting wine. I moved away from my trolley whilst choosing. When I turned back, that customer from before was leaning over my trolley. Uh, hi, this is my trolley, you know? Oh, I know, I'm just taking one of your steaks. What? I chose those, you were there too. I I saw you pick some up. Right, but I got 14 and I need one more. Uh, I have three, you're not taking one of mine? I deliberately pulled my trolley away from her at this point. You have to! I need it for the multi-deal! And I need it to feed three people. No. She's red in the face by now. I'll go and get the manager then. Go ahead. She runs off and I finish choosing my wine. Five minutes later, I'm waiting to get checked out when the lady comes over with the manager. She stood back with this smug look I could see through her mask while the manager came over. Mom, this lady says you stole one of her steaks. Is that true? No, I picked up three at the freezer and later on I found her leaning over my trolley and she said she'd take one. She said she needs it for the multi-deal. The manager sighed. (sighs) I knew it. She does this. I'm sorry to trouble you. Enjoy your day. You two, good luck with her. The manager sighed again and walked away. As I checked out, I saw him guiding her away from the till points. A few minutes later, I heard a security to the meat art announcement as I was leaving. The steaks were lovely, but not worth stealing from someone else's trolley. My god, 15 steaks? Who are you feeding? An entire village? Seriously, why get 15 for the multi-deal? Why not just settle on, you know, 12? Let other people have a couple steaks as well? This guy is just getting three. I mean, seriously, you're stealing from his trolley when he has three and you have 14? Wow. Wow. Uh, wow, any of you ever bought over 14 steaks? I mean, even if you're like doing a barbecue for a lot of people, you wouldn't need that many steaks. You get burgers, sausages, other stuff as well, surely. Not 14 steaks. 15 steaks you wanted? Jesus! W- wow! Now moving on to our final story of today's episode. Karen insults my wedding ring to my face. First of all, some backstory. When I first met the man who became my husband, we were not well off. He moved across the country to come and live with me and had not a penny to his name. He proposed to me without a ring, which I was perfectly okay with. It was incredibly romantic. He actually popped the question spontaneously and it's still one of the happiest days of my life. He promised me when he was better off financially, he would buy any ring that I wanted. A while after our engagement, the day came where he surprised me by taking me to a jewelry store. He had saved a $5,000 budget, plus a little wigger room for some credit if needed. He told me to go nuts. It was so fun and romantic. I tried on dozens of rings, diamonds, platinum bands, lesser gemstones, etc. Then I saw a set of steel titanium rings. 
They were originally designed for the grooms, not for the brides, but I'd never been a big diamond fan, and I preferred simple flat rings to mounted stones. I ended up falling in love with a super simple black titanium ring with angled grooves. It was gorgeous. It was exactly what I wanted. And best of all, they were cheap, less than $200. My husband liked them too, so much that we got him a matching band. We decided to use them as both the engagement ring and the actual wedding ring. We had to special order them as the jewelry store didn't stock our sizes on hand. I got a surprise when they arrived to find that my husband had requested engraving on the inside of mine. It said, my precious. I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. I love that ring to death. I wear it to this day and it still makes me smile. So then, the story. This took place seven years after I got married. I worked at a chain sandwich shop where we assembled the sandwiches in front of the customer. My store was next to a yoga studio, CrossFit training, and plastic surgeon's office. So we got our fair share of Karens and holier-than-thou rich people. It wasn't uncommon for somebody to drive up in a $100,000 sports car, toting a Prada bag and sunglasses that cost more than my rent. They almost always came in to order the most picky, complicated subs, then complain about the price. We were quite used to those kind of people. But this lady took the cake. Enter the entitled Karen and her bratty teenage daughter. They looked the part to a T. They proceeded to order the usual complicated, picky subs, asking tons of questions about the nutritional info of every item. To assemble the food, we wear clear plastic food service gloves. Because my ring is flush to my hand and won't rip the gloves, I had approval from the manager to wear it at work. While assembling this woman's sandwich, her teenage daughter notices my ring. Oh, that's cute. Is that a promise ring? No, that's actually my wedding ring. Karen then scoffs loudly. Are you serious? Yes, it's both my engagement and wedding ring. It has been for several years. Karen looked me dead in the eyes and said, you have a cheap husband. I balked at her comments, but tried to remain professional. That may be your opinion, mom, but I happen to like this ring. I picked it out myself. Honestly, managing to stay professional in that situation is something I could not do when being insulted like that. That is crazy. And to be completely honest, if that was me in that situation, screw my job. I'm going all out on this woman saying, how dare you say something like that to me about my ring? Karen replied, anyway, then you have a terrible taste in jewelry. She then turned to her daughter. If your father had given me a ring that ugly, I would have left him on the spot. Make sure your future husband gets you a ring that at least has diamonds in it. I was floored. I usually get a ton of compliments about my ring. I never expected someone to insult it, let alone straight to my face. I was so flabbergasted, I couldn't even continue working on her food. I excused myself and went into the back and told my coworker to finish them up for me. I couldn't even stand to be around them. When I told my manager the whole story, he almost didn't believe me. We had to watch the security footage to prove it had actually happened. We never saw that entitled woman again. I'm glad she didn't come back. I still shake with rage every time I recount the story. I still have that ring on my hand today, and it's still the most beautiful, wonderful ring I could ever hope for. I love my husband very much. He's the best thing that's ever happened to me, and that matters far more than any jewelry. I mean, personally, guys, I've never really understood why buying an expensive ring is so important for so many people. I mean, surely if, like OP, you see one that you really like and it happens to be cheaper than you expected, just get it. It's still a great ring. Like, yes, it's not the most expensive ring. It's not $5,000 plus, but who really cares? Like, who's going to come up to you apart from this entire woman and say, oh my God, that ring is so cheap. Why didn't you get a more expensive one? I mean, I say that it did literally just happen in the story. Um, so there's that. But still, this woman is like a, a once in a lifetime. Surely that is not going to happen regularly surely i mean ultimately if you're happy with the ring as you say at the end there it really doesn't matter what other people think about it it's just like baffling that people care so much isn't it to like say oh my god how does your husband not buy you a more expensive and nicer ring than that with diamonds in it who gives a sh <laughs> All right, we'll probably have to bleep that, but um, <laughs> that's my general thoughts. Entitled mother demands my prize money. Where I worked, we would have a holiday party where we could play games to win money. The way it worked was that everyone would win at least $5. Well, one of the games was a speed round question type thing. Think family feud style. One of my coworkers who was playing against me loudly commented that she would freak me out and win 
it's easy, I'm no competition, etc. She was so focused on making faces at me and trying to act tough, she completely missed the question. I answered correctly and she was out of the game. She loudly complained it wasn't fair and sat sulking. I won the top prize and she came up to me demanding I give her the money because she's a single mother and needed that money for Christmas gifts for her children. She then went on saying I'm horrible, don't need that money, I must hate children, their Christmas is ruined and it's all my fault, and more. She even tried to grab at my pocket where my wallet was. Our boss told her to back off. She also tried to rally other workers against me. It didn't work and she was written up. For months, I was called a selfish, child-hating female dog by her for not giving her the money. My prize money amount? $40. Before all of this, she was bragging about all of the stuff she and her baby daddy bought for the children, including new phones and gaming consoles. So yeah, she didn't need it. And there I was thinking that OP had won a massive prize, like at least $1,000 or something that's like properly significant enough to, you know, spend a lot of money on a newborn baby. Not $40, man. $40? Everyone gets $5, but you're almost on your way to $40. Jesus, seriously? $40? You're not making this much of a fuss? Why? Now moving on to our second story. Entitled grandparents' horrible life revealed during custody battle. This one, guys, strap in is what I'm going to say. It's incredible. This story is long, but needs to be told. It was the darkest time in our lives. My husband and I met almost 11 years ago. At that time, he had not known where his only son was, and he'd not seen him for two years. Before the disappearance, my husband had been involved daily, taking him to daycare and even the mum to work, until her boyfriend was arrested and transferred to another state for charges he had there. My husband sold his motorcycle to help her pay bills, but instead she packed up and took off to use that money to bail him out and live in the state he was transported to. He tried for months to talk to her parents, but they claim they didn't know anything. We married right before his deployment, and I decided to start a search, hoping he'd be allowed contact with his son before deploying. I was able to find the woman and discovered she was back in state and had abandoned their child with her parents. She allowed him visitation only if we paid for his birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese, so we did this gladly. My husband remained in contact daily until his deployment overseas. He continued trying to call when he had access, but they would not answer and eventually changed their number again so he no longer had that access. We found out later that they were also telling him that his daddy didn't want anything to do with him. I continued to monitor my husband's son's mother's social media, and right before his return, I discovered that she had several charges in different counties and was actually on the run. So as soon as he returned stateside, we filed custody. We also discovered that she had abandoned her infant with her brother in another state, as her parents refused to take him and had called CPS to pick him up. They only wanted the child she had with my husband because he was paying support. Throughout this process, I'd been angry at my husband because he never fought for his rights. But what I learned and what most men feel is that he believed he had no rights and did whatever they wanted. He and his family would have to pay support in order to have any type of visitation with his son. He didn't know that he could go to court and file for his rights as most men don't. The grandparents were both druggies who eventually dragged their daughter into it and they tried pawning her onto my husband because her habit had become too much for them. When my husband discovered their lifestyle, he left and she showed up a few months later pregnant. At the time of filing for custody, they awarded the grandparents temp custody during transition because the mother was a wanted fugitive and couldn't be involved. Our state doesn't even allow grandparents rights, but judges here will give over custody to grandparents before they will a dad because they want the government funding they get from collecting child support from dads. We went through a year and three months battling a judge that hates men and straight up told my husband his military career made him look unstable so she'd never turn over custody to him. So in response, he just gave up his military career. In this year and three months, these people would break every court order put in place and have zero responsibility for them. They wouldn't use a car seat. They were doing drug deals around him. He stayed sick due to the cigarette smoke in the house. They refused legal visitation time and took off out of state to hide him. They wouldn't take him to school. They allowed the mother to be in the home, even though there was a no contact order in place for her. Being determined and maybe a little psycho when it comes to my kids, I'd managed to find things our attorney could not. 
We discovered he didn't have a bed there because they had too many people living in the home. We also found he had an STD at one point, which caused CPS involvement. They were abusive to their other grandson, calling him names and beating him when they'd visit because he was autistic and they themselves had been arrested for making and selling meth and the grandfather had been arrested for beating the grandma. The drug charge was not publicly known. I'm guessing because they ratted. However, there was a case in figuring out what to legally do with property that was forfeited after the arrest. I found this and proof of the bio mum being allowed in the house that resulted in us getting temporary custody. A year and one month in and the grandparents failed a drug test. The daughter had twins that were taken by CPS immediately after birth due to drug use while pregnant and her current fugitive status. Still, the judge refused to give over custody to a willing and able father. Our attorney, also prior military, put pressure on the judge and we had sent a complaint to the state Supreme Court, along with every single state official detailing how this judge was doing everything against the laws in our states. Eventually, the judge couldn't take the pressure and gave us custody. It came out that she was hoping the buyer mum would get her legal stuff in order and she could give over custody to her instead. In August of 2013, we brought our baby home permanently. However, we were forced to give the grandparents visitation that lasted until March of 2014. They continued smoking around him, making him so sick he wound up on multiple medications. They took him to do drug deals, which he told his counselor about, and also told him he wasn't my husband's son and they were going to get custody back, resulting in lots of nightmares. They'd also been telling him my husband never loved him or had anything to do with him, which took weeks in counseling and pictures proving otherwise. They put this boy through hell. His teeth were rotted out of his head and at four and five, he spent his life in front of two TVs with just cartoons and video games. He only ate fast food and pop and was too weak to pedal a bicycle. He watched his mother get beat and a knife to her throat and then she'd disappear for hours to go and do drugs, leaving him at three years old to care for an infant. They mentally abused him and used him for child support. The last time he came home reeking of cigarettes so bad, it threw my older daughter into an asthma attack and that ended their visits. The things they told him and did have trickled out through the years. He remembered one of the times we were refused visitation was because his mother had taken him and hid in a hotel. He watched her steal things from stores and she was arrested four times at their house through all of this. Yes, I called and reported it every time. These horrible people have not been part of his life since then. His bio mum has done a stint in prison and is once again running from new charges and her probation. He'll be 14 years old this year and he's very needy with me because I make him feel loved and safe. This child is one of the biggest blessings I've ever had. He's so thoughtful and kind and tries to take care of me. His father is scared to let him go anywhere away from us because of the trauma that not knowing where he was caused and then hearing what all he went through in that time. I've never met more horrible people in my life, nor have I ever imagined how resilient he would be after going through all this. He's so very smart, special, and a gift I thank God for daily. We both agree that even with my husband's deployments, which was a pretty bad one, this was far worse than anything else. We've spent years now fighting for father's rights across the country and been a part of some law changes in our state. We have to inform men of their rights. We have to give them the resources because children deserve both parents. It's disgusting how much it costs in legal fees just to be a parent and maybe one day it won't be necessary. We've got people working on the government level to change these laws that created this inequality. My husband is an amazing father. Not only did he raise his three children from a previous marriage, but we've done youth and college age ministry together, giving kids a family where they didn't have one before. We've provided a home, food, insurance, gas money, and phones. He will never stop caring and loving those that were abandoned. There are so many men out there that are amazing fathers, but don't get the chance to be. They take their lives daily. They have everything taken from them and are financially ruined when all they want is to love their kids. Children deserve custody of both parents. Alienation has to stop. Our now 14 year old is our youngest. That may have been the worst thing we've ever gone through, but I'd do it again for him. I will never not fight for my kids and I'll never not fight for other fathers going through this. If you know one, check on them, hook them up with groups that can help give information and encouragement. Courts are not fair and men feel the loss of their children the same as a mother. 
They're hurting and grieving daily for a child that is still alive. They're losing hope and giving up. They're being made to feel guilty if they stop fighting because they're tired and broke. It's emotionally draining and leaves you completely depleted. These men eventually believe that it would be better for their kids if they just walk away. They don't want them in the middle of the fighting anymore. Maybe the ex and judges convince them that they're not worthy, so their kids will be better without them. A very interesting theme there. I'll be honest, guys, I really don't have much knowledge or experience in terms of, you know, uh, custody, divorce, that sort of stuff. Unfortunately, my parents are still together and, you know, I don't really know much about all that stuff. I'll be honest. So you guys probably can enlighten me in the comments down below. But I do know that, yeah, OP is definitely right. I mean, all the specifics in law are interesting there. And the fact that judges are still, well, some judges anyway, are still massively favoring towards women than, than men in terms of custody is definitely true. But yeah, I, I wonder why there is this stigma or this like general feeling that men are less responsible than women when it comes to parenting maybe that's true as well maybe that is just a fact but it is definitely unfair on men like you know op's husband in this story who clearly is a great man would do anything to you know see their child and look after their son but it's not being allowed to and in fact you know it goes the other way like clearly the woman his ex and their family are just completely mental why is the judge siding with them over the man is it just because she's a woman i don't know it's tough to say maybe there are other reasons that weren't disclosed in this in this story in this post i'm not sure though because as it stands in that story yeah a severe lack of equality going on in in this case in particular and if this is a common thing you know throughout court cases and and custody and divorce sort of battles then it's very worrying isn't it and i'm not really sure why it's going on but yeah as i say please let me know down below if you know anything about this have experience with it or you know are a lawyer that'd be ideal because i really don't know too much but yeah interesting stuff nonetheless hope you enjoyed that story an entitled mum wants to get her entitled kid to drive my new car i got into redditor videos a few days ago and i remembered an entitled parent story that happened to me about half a year ago well first of all op you're an absolute legend for watching my videos second of all guys if you're watching and you are new to my channel please make sure you hit the subscribe button it's totally free and it makes me feel incredible so thank you anyway sorry for that let's get into this story so for some context i bought myself a mini cooper se the first fully electric vehicle by Mini a few weeks before this story happens. Where I live, in Germany, electric cars need to have a so-called AVAS, which is Acoustic Vehicle Alerting System, turned on when driving below 30 km per hour. The AVAS makes a sound to warn walkers and bikers on the street because electric vehicles normally don't make much noise. The one on the Mini Cooper SE kind of sounds like a spaceship. Now, this will be important for later. Can I just say, I actually had no idea that this was the case. I didn't know that electric cars were required to make a noise when they're going at a certain speed, below a certain speed threshold. That makes a lot of sense to me because I've always wondered, you know, cars that are silent, surely they're going to, you know, cause some crashes. That is genius. Now onto the story. About half a year ago, we celebrated my grandma's 60th birthday and I took my new mini to get to the celebration. I didn't know who else was invited, but I didn't really care at the time. The ride to my grandma's place was long and I knew that I needed to recharge at my grandma's place or else I couldn't make it back home. So I arrive and I see a few people, including my entitled aunt and her entitled kid, waiting for me in the driveway to park in the parking lot that they'd prepared for me the one next to an outlet where I could charge my car, I drove rather slowly because I'd only done this a few times before and I was extra careful. Therefore, the AVAS system was turned on. I get out, plug my car into the outlet and we go inside to celebrate. After about two hours, I wanted to go and check if my car was all right. Remember guys, it was rather new at this time, so this was completely normal and to get some fresh air as well. I go out and see the entitled aunt and her kid looking at my car. The following conversation went kind of like this. Mummy, this car sounded like a spaceship. I know, sweetie. I don't know why it does that, though. Uh, guys, can I help you with something? Is this your car? Yes. My child wants to drive it. Uh, what? I, I can drive it for a bit and take him with me if that's what you'd like? <laughs> no, no, uh, he wants to drive it. It doesn't look as complicated as a normal car, so I'm sure he can drive it. For some context, the Cooper SE has only two pedals and no gear lever because it's electric. Also, when talking about my car earlier, I said that it feels like you're driving a go-kart. Uh, I can assure you that he doesn't want to drive it. It's way more complicated than it looks. But it sounded like a spaceship, so it can't be more than a little toy. I want to drive that spaceship now! Sorry, but I can't allow that. Why not? 
you're just being selfish. Sure, he can drive for a minute or two in the driveway just here. No, he's just a kid. Well, I bet you don't even own that car. It sure is stolen or someone else owns it. Uh, no, I've literally got the keys. I pull out the keys and open the car. Big, big mistake. Look, sweetie, and now you can get in. She picks up her son and puts him on the driver's seat. I'm very annoyed and angry at this point. Excuse me, what do you think you're doing? You've been very rude to me and my little angel, so he deserves to drive your car. Now, the kid obviously couldn't start up the car because it was still plugged in, but he was messing around with the electronics inside and he tried to actually start the engine multiple times. There's a yellow obvious start switch below the GPS system. Would you please take your kid out of my car? No, he deserves it. That's where I'd had enough. I pushed the entire mum aside and opened the driver's seat door. I take the entitled kid out of my car myself and put him on the floor on his feet. What does the entitled butthole do? He lets himself fall on purpose and then starts crying that I broke his arm while taking him out of the car. Of course, the mum then starts screaming and shouting about how close her son was to death. I really didn't use much force or anything. The other family members hear the entitled kids crying. Meanwhile, I unplug my car, get into it and drive away. So OP's just off. He's out of here. That's actually quite a sensible solution, to be fair. If you stuck around and the kid was crying and it was two people blaming you, you could have been in a lot of trouble. So I think that was actually a very good idea. On my way back home, I had to recharge once. And that's where I called the others back and tell them what actually happened. They tell me that my entitled aunt tried to call an ambulance and actually was kicked out of the celebration. Oh, and also, just in case any of you are wondering if this story was fake or not, Opie's actually said, if you tell me this is a fake story, I'll tell you that you're wrong. Thanks for reading. Well, that clears that one up then. Oh, and also, just in case any of you are wondering if this story might be fake, Opie actually says at the bottom of this story, if you tell me this is fake, I'll tell you that you're wrong. Thanks for reading. Well, I guess that clears it up then. He also says in the comments down below that the kid would have been about six or seven years old, which honestly just makes the story even more mad because what are you doing, woman? Uh, I don't understand. Has this lady never been in a car before? I mean, what does this lady not understand though, really? Driving a car, by the way, is quite hard especially if you've never done it before. Even for me, right? I passed my test a couple years ago and I'm still terrible at driving. In fact, I literally haven't driven since I passed my test. But um, yeah, it's tough to do, especially in a manual car. Like, even if it's an electric automatic car, it's still hard. You gotta be aware, you gotta have common sense. You gotta be, well, the legal age, 17, 18, whatever it is in Germany. I don't know, but not six or seven, that's for sure. And even on private property, even in a parking lot, you're going to be have to making turns and that sort of stuff and being able to look over the steering wheel and see where you're going. It's an obvious no. Why? And now moving on to our second story. A wild Karen got arrested with a felony. For some background, I'm a 35-year-old father of two boys. I have PTSD due to time overseas and have the physical scars to match the mental ones. I have an incredible wife that knows me and knows what situations I should avoid. My children are amazing, but this story revolves around my youngest son and my service dog. James, my youngest son, has autism, and we share a special bond because some things that set him off also put my teeth on edge. Spike is my English bulldog. He's my service dog. He's well-trained, lazy, judgmental, and overall uninterested in anything he can't eat. He's also very in tune to James and my emotions and will provide a distraction when we get overwhelmed. Basically, he's like, oh, you're stressed? Here, scratch my butt. You'll feel better and I'll get attention. It's a win-win. So now for the story. My family recently moved to Texas. Because we now live very close to an amusement park, we got memberships. Shout out to the park for being amazing when it comes to special needs. This particular park in Arlington, Texas has a special program for autistic people. They have rooms set aside to chill out if you're overstimulated so you can relax, go back out, get overstimulated again and around and around you go. That is amazing. With James, we also don't have to wait in lines. This is a huge thing and the cause of this story. The park has a pass that lets you skip most of the lines and they charge an arm and a leg for this. However, with that pass, you still end up in a line of the hundreds of people that also have that pass. But James gets no lines at all. We get a special pass and we go in through the exit. The worker signs the pass and we go on the ride. James has a favorite ride, the log ride. There have been days that we'd ride the log ride over and over, then eat. We also have the food pass, which we pay for, 
then go back to the log ride. On this day, Tom, my eldest, and James wanted to go on the log ride. So we made our way to the exit and left my wife and Spike in the shade because someone's got to stay with him and bulldogs and rides obviously don't mix. As we were going into the exit, a woman started screaming at us. I've absolutely no hearing on my right side. Thanks, high pressure wave. So I didn't consider it worth turning my head to listen to. Now, because we ride this ride almost exclusively, the workers on this ride know us by name and sight. James even talks to them, which is rare. We go in, show the pass, sit and ride. This time though, Tabitha, I'll call her Tabitha because Karen is overused, good point. The woman that was screaming at us as we were walking in through the exits made her way to where the speedy pass ends at the ride, where a red shirt will check her pass and let her go on her way. But she didn't even want to ride. She just wanted to yell about us going in through the exits and how we are abusing the system. Now, anyone that looks at James can see he's all in the world on his own and wouldn't be surprised if he's literally reading the future or talking to aliens. He's awesome. The red shirt tries to calm her down. Tom is getting upset because he's a normal nine-year-old and adults yelling is uncool. James is making his excited sounds and waiting for the log to stop so he can get in. We get in and as we float away, we still hear Tabitha screaming. The ride ends and we exit. We figured we'd never see Tabitha again, but obviously as I'm posting this, it didn't really go that way. Tabitha appeared like a dark brother after making the sacrifice, Elder Scrolls reference, hooting and screaming. She was screaming that just because James is an R word doesn't mean we get extra rights. The screaming causes James to let out his super screech. Now, anyone that knows autism knows that autistic kids have superpowers. In James's case, it's a supersonic, ear-shattering, high-pitched screech that makes your eyes swim and makes it feel like things in your head are moving that really shouldn't. This whole time, Spike was lying on the ground in the froggy position, as bulldogs do, just looking at Tabitha like she's a rabid dog, but not worth getting up for. As we are being screamed at, I see two officers approaching from behind Tabitha. I smile. My smile must have broke Tabitha because she then hauled off and kicked Spike. This flips my switch because now my family is literally under attack and I start to react. Before I could make contact, Tabitha is already in the air, being half carried, half dragged away while being cuffed. Now in front of me is a well-dressed and annoyed looking officer. He tells us he heard the screech and started heading towards it because they thought a ride broke or something actually bad had happened. I take the time to unflip that switch and examine Spike. He's limping and crying. I feel his hips and feel that his hip is dislocated. The officer asks what happened and we all explain what went on from A to Z. He asks if Spike is a service dog. I say yes. He smiles. I'm not really in a smart mood, but it catches me off guard. He explains that in Texas, to intentionally injure a service dog is actually a felony. By this time, park security arrived and issued a trespass order to Tabitha. The officers ask if I want to press charges. I look at Spike and I look back. Yes, I say. Tabitha and her tiny mouse-like husband start to freak out as Tabitha is loaded onto a golf cart. We hop on a cart too and leave to go to the vet. The vet fixed Spike and all is well. We went back the next day with Spike in a stroller. No one batted an eyelid and everyone loves the bulldog in a stroller. I let people pet him, he's a hoot and the park is an amazing place. I've been contacted by the investigating officer and have given depositions. I may have to testify, but I look forward to sitting on the bench with Spike on my lap. Uh, yeah, pretty extreme reaction there from this woman. Not getting what you want in a certain situation. I'm just going to kick a dog. Why? Well, I don't really know. It's not really something that I would do in that situation. And I imagine not something that many people would think to do. But she did it. Quite why she did it, I'm not really sure. A question, actually, for those of you that know about, you know, the law and dogs in general. Is it therefore not a felony if you just kick a random dog? Does it have to be a service dog for it to be a felony? Because if that's the case, shouldn't it have the same sort of punishment if it's a dog or a service dog or just any animal? Kick any sort of animal is a little bit mad i think but yeah overall spike sounds like an absolute legend of a dog and um definitely sue this woman for as much money as she has because kicking an animal nah that's just not on i work in an antique store don't let your child climb in the vase seriously if they break it you have to buy it a child maybe seven years old got stuck in a very large very expensive vase today 
My boss was on the shop floor. He explained the policy about breakages to the parents of this kid. But he's a child, they squealed. My boss just shrugged and pointed to the policy poster. He pointed out the cameras that caught them lifting their child into said expensive bars for funsies. The stuck child began to panic. I came out of the back to a broken vase and parents threatening to sue. So my boss threatened to call the police. In the end, the parents did pay for the vase and took their uninjured child away, thankfully. Basically, don't put your kids in expensive vases. I feel this should go without saying. A cheeky little story to start off today's episode then. I mean, to be fair, if the kid had gone in the vase himself, you could say, you know what, they're just a kid. But the parents putting their own kid in the vase and then saying, you know what, we're not paying. And if you force us to, we're going to sue. Why? Now moving on to our second story. My parents attempt to break up my relationship several times, culminating in the Thanksgiving from heck. Okay, this is a long one, but I hope it's worth a listen. My wife is a long-time lurker of this subreddit, and I've recently started reading these and listening to the stories, so I was inspired to post. My parents have long been a pain in my butt, but for now, I'm going to mainly focus on my Thanksgiving from heck and the incidents leading up to it. A few years ago, I met my future wife on an online dating app. We hit it off fairly quickly, and the relationship progressed really fast. I was in my late 20s and she turned 30 soon after we met. We both had a good idea of what we were looking for in a partner and had no interest in games. I met her parents within a few months, though I was much more reluctant to introduce her to mine for reasons that will become apparent. The problems began almost as soon as I told my folks I was dating someone. This was about six months into my relationship as I was reluctant to inform my parents due to the fact they tried to call the cops on my last long-term girlfriend. I might share that story later, please do. Myself, my brother, and my parents were having dinner at a local Mexican restaurant and making small talk. They started asking me questions about my girlfriend, mostly the usual innocent questions, but at some point I let slip that she was Jewish. Boy, was that a mistake. My parents are hyper-conservative Christians. For years, they've been trying to get me to date a girl from our church. A good friend of mine, but we were never really a match to be a couple. And they always expected I would marry someone who was at least Christian. I am Christian by belief to this day, but I rarely have interactions with the church due to some incidents with the priest. No, not that kind of incident, but yet another good story for later. My dad, without missing a beat, told me i should break up with my girlfriend he told me that i was going to marry a christian girl and that was that i was fuming and i don't remember the full extent of the rest of that conversation but i told him that i wasn't breaking up with her and the rest of the dinner was tense the next couple of months went about as smooth as you might imagine but i thought i was slowly wearing them down at some point they invited my girlfriend and i over for dinner and i thought there was finally some progress being made Nope. They got my brother to distract me in another room of the house while they sat down with my girlfriend and explained why they did not think she was good for me. They straight up told my girlfriend that she needed to break up with me because I was going to marry a good Christian girl. They even offered to pay her if she ended up leaving me. My girlfriend politely told them off and we left. Fast forward to November. My family is really big on the holidays, as I know many are, and we had very large extended family gatherings for Thanksgiving and Christmas. I think in my entire life, we only missed one of these events. I wanted to go and take my girlfriend to meet the rest of the family. My parents may have had their heads up their butts, but the rest of my family has always seemed great to me. The event would be at my grandmother's house this year, my mum's mother, with a small gathering for my dad's side the day before Thanksgiving. I talked to my grandmother, who was fine with me bringing my girlfriend up so long as she slept in a separate room. No problem. There's no way I'm going to have sex with my girlfriend in my grandmother's house anyway. I decided to ask my mother as well. Not that I needed her permission, but I'm an optimist, and I hoped that she'd be on board and maybe see my girlfriend having positive interactions with the family would help the general situation. My mother was resistant at first, mainly because she was upset that we were getting an apartment together and did not want to encourage the relationship further. But eventually, she agreed. I should also note, I set some very clear boundaries with my mother about conversation for this trip which she brushed off as unnecessary, but I had my guard up nonetheless. We head out to my grandmother's city, and frankly, the first day is nothing but pleasant. 
my girlfriend gets to meet both of my grandmothers some of my cousins and other extended family We're having a fairly good time and I think things are actually going to go well Until my girlfriend and I decide to go to a movie We are going to go and see arrival in theaters My brother who is five years older than me wants to tag along He rode up with my parents. My girlfriend and I came up in my car So my brother has to ride with us to the movie The three of us sit together and my girlfriend and I snuggle through most of it It was a fantastic movie and the ending made me cry My girlfriend held me as the credits rolled But I think all the cuddles had not sat well with my brother who was single He got up and I will never forget what he said or the malicious tone in which he said it Too bad mum and dad will never let you marry her because she's Jew My brother jogged out of the theater before either my girlfriend or I could muster up a response We sat there a bit dumbfounded for a few minutes Eventually the house lights went up in the theater and we tried to formulate a plan I have no idea where my brother is at this point, but he can't go too far considering we drove him I decided to call my folks considering I have no clue where he is and I really don't want to talk to him at this point To my surprise, my mother sides with me and tells me it's all right if we just leave him. He can get an Uber back. We half consider it, but we find him on the way out. And my girlfriend, who is used to dealing with buttholes and children in her job, completely cows him with words. He silently rides back with us. We drop him off and my girlfriend and I go have dinner by ourselves. We debate just leaving entirely, but decide my parents themselves have not crossed any of the boundaries we set, so we're gonna stay for now. It wouldn't take them very long though that same evening I was getting ready to watch some netflix in bed with my girlfriend nothing untoward was going to happen She just likes falling asleep to the great british baking show as I walk past the living room My mother calls me in and complains that I am not spending enough time with my family I'm a bit angry at this common manipulation tactic from my mother But I go and chat for my grandmother's sake My mum tries to tell me that my grandmother is upset with me that my girlfriend and I are planning on moving in together Before we're even married. I decide that my grandmother does not need my mother being a mouthpiece for her So I sit on the couch in between the two of them and face my grandmother My grandmother and I chat She's a bit worried about me moving in with the woman while unwed, but we calmly discuss the situation She doesn't back down on her objection, but eventually concedes that it's my life She likes my girlfriend and she's happy for us regardless this entire time My mother has been constantly trying to butt in on the conversation But I am physically putting myself between her and my grandmother, which is just annoying her even more Eventually my father sees what's going on and also butts in Apparently he can't contain himself anymore and just goes off about everything he sees wrong with my relationship I can't remember his exact gripes. I likely tuned them out, but I did call him a coward for talking rubbish behind my girlfriend's back She was in her room still waiting on me This really angered him and he stormed out to fetch my girlfriend He came back with her in tow and proceeded to tear into her in front of me My mum, and my grandmother who was mortified this was happening in her house He said, my son will be Christian. His wife will be Christian. His children will be baptized in our church. He was almost screaming at her. He also basically accused her of trying to steal my inheritance by getting knocked up by me and added some very inappropriate commentary about how he knew my girlfriend was getting older and her biological clock was ticking down. Through the whole tirade, my wife stood there quietly. Like I said, she's used to dealing with buttholes and she's tough as nails Letting him finish up and run out of energy My girlfriend turned to my grandmother and thanked her for her hospitality Before turning back to my father and asking him Why did you even invite us here if you were going to act like this? My dad yelled again We did not invite you here We never would have invited you here At this point, I gleefully pulled out my phone and showed him the conversation I had had with my mother, where she literally agreed for my girlfriend to be here. My dad couldn't find the words, but just glared at his wife. At this point, I told them that my girlfriend and I were leaving. It was near 11 o'clock, but we packed up my car and left for our hometown. My dad got in one more word before we left, saying, You two better have broken up by the time you get home. Have a long, hard think about your future. 
to which I just laughed as we got in the car. My girlfriend and I drove home on pure adrenaline. We alternated between angry, humiliation, and frustration at the absurdity of the whole thing. This story does have something of a happy ending though. In the days that followed, we got a lot of calls and messages of support from my relatives, who I hadn't told about the incident. It turns out my brother had made some vague social media posts about how sad he was for me and asking everyone to pray for my brother. Apparently, many of my relatives took this to mean I'd been hurt and were all calling my mother and father. When my parents were forced to explain the situation, all of my relatives sided with my girlfriend and I. In the months that followed, this incident caused my grandmother to think back on how she acted with her own daughters. It turns out that my mother had been the only marriage out of three daughters my grandmother had actually approved of. This incident made my grandmother realize that she'd acted poorly with her other daughters and she came to them to finally mend those old wounds. I had no idea. It always seemed like my grandmother and her daughters had a great relationship, but these were old wounds that had just scabbed rather than really healed. Overall, my family got closer because of this incident. In addition, my father has had a dramatic change over the course of the intervening years. Where once it seemed like we were not going to invite my parents to our wedding, my dad ended up actually being the happiest person there, where my girlfriend, now wife, and I tied the knots. This has been helped by the fact that he discovered some underlying mental health issues after that Thanksgiving, and the meds he is using are truly helping him. He started acting like the father I loved when I was a kid. My mother is still a problem, and boy do I have more stories, but she's mostly behaving because she knows my wife and I can and will block her from seeing her future grandchildren. Now, this was a truly great story. Not very often do we see entitled people in the stories that I read to you guys actually, you know, improve their lives, understand the mistakes they've made in their past and actually become better people. It's so crazy to see that that has happened with the vast majority of the people that were the problem in this story OP. I mean, your dad is one thing, but your grandmother to go back with her own daughters and say, you know what? I'm so sorry about how I acted and, and didn't approve of your marriages. And, you know, let's try and heal those wounds of so many years ago is amazing. So ultimately, I've got to say well done to you and your girlfriend for standing up to these people and you know making them change their ways and really consider it all in a different perspective and go back and correct their mistakes it's amazing to see i wish the same could be said about your mother but unfortunately um i don't think she's quite there yet and if that is true about her just wanting to see her grandchildren and that's the only reason why she's being nice to you and your girlfriend your wife now then that is very very sad i'm not gonna lie hopefully you know enough conversations with her own mother with your dad her husband can make her understand that there's no reason to be like that just accept that your, your son is very happy in a lovely relationship. Just be nice. Entitled Karen wants free pizza forever. Get banned instead. So I'm a store manager for a large chain pizza place that charges a bit more than the competition, but makes an arguably better product. We try to always believe the customer and make them happy if something is wrong. We have a loyal base of regulars who order often, as well as a lot of other business from randoms in the several nearby hotels. So it's Friday night. An entitled Karen calls in an order a very simple pepperoni and jalapeno pizza. The driver delivers it. 30 minutes later, I'm asked to talk to an angry customer on the phone. It is the Karen. Is this the manager? I've been on hold for over half an hour. Now, that is impossible, but okay. I'm very sorry about that, mom. What seems to be the problem? I'm at the hotel and your driver was so rude and my pizza is burnt. I'm very sorry to hear that the pizza was not up to our quality standards. Can I make you another and send it out? No, don't bother. You've already ruined my kid's dinner and they're crying now. Give me a credit. Now that, by the way, is a major red flag. Okay, mom, I'll credit your number and when you order next, it will be free. I'm very sorry again. Have a good night. Whatever. Then she hangs up. I credit the number and think, whatever, that's the end of it. Roll on Saturday night. A colleague again says to me, hey, this lady on the phone wants to speak to a manager. Hello, thank you for holding. This is the manager. Are you all idiotic? How long does it take to answer the freaking phone? I'm sorry, what? You've only been on hold for a moment while my employee got me. Don't freaking tell me how long I've been on hold. I know how long I've been on hold for. I was groaning inwardly already. A fun customer 
Yippee. Uh, I- I'm sorry, mum. How can I assist you? My pizza is burnt, and you have the rudest freaking delivery driver. They practically threw the pizza in my face. A light bulb clicked at this story. I've dealt with this lady before. I'm sorry to hear that. I'll definitely talk to the driver about it. Um, can I make you a new pizza to replace the one you said is burnt? No, give me a credit. Okay, mom. Uh, to ensure our quality standards are being met, can I have a driver come and pick up the burnt pizza so I can talk to my production staff about it? No, we, we ate it. Wait, you, you ate the burnt pizza? Yes, we were starving and couldn't wait for a remake. Uh, just give me a credit. What, for the pizza you ate? Well, it was freaking burnt. Let me speak to a manager. I am the manager. No, I want to speak to your manager. You're being so rude and disrespectful. It's because I'm black, isn't it? You freaking racist POS. Mom, one, stop cussing. Two, I have no idea what you look like or who you are. But And she cuts me off. That's right, you idiot. You don't know who the frick I am, but you're about to find out. She then hangs up before I can say anything else. Being as she was extra, I let my district manager know about a possible complaint on my behavior. And I said what actually went down. Just as I get off the phone with her, I hear yelling in the lobby. It was her. Where is that idiotic racist manager? I step around the partition and see a cow of a woman wearing tacky bright green and orange with red shoes. What an image of an outfit that is, by the way, guys. That is astonishing. Can I help you? I'm already done with this person because I know exactly who it is. What, are you going to say something to me now? Give me a dang refund for my burnt pizza. And I want gas money as well for driving over here. You didn't pay for any pizza. It was free. And we don't reimburse gas for people driving to the store. What, you think this is a freaking joke? You're going to give me my freaking money or it's going to go off in this building. Now, I am 100% done at this point. Get out. What the F did you say? Get out of the store. You can't tell me to leave. This is a public space. No, mom. It's a private business and you are no longer allowed. I'm refusing to serve you. Leave now or I'll be forced to call the police. F you. F you. She continued to bellow this until the police arrive. I had to hear every sing song version of F you for about five minutes. The police said to me, do you want to trespass, sir? Uh, Yeah, uh, she isn't welcome here anymore. I replied now the police in our town are super cool with us because we give them special discounts And occasionally donate a stack of pizzas to the precinct the policeman who was just outside the main door easily heard me Okay, so you are now being trespassed. He said to the woman do not come here Do not linger in the parking lot or you will be arrested This applies for every single chain of the pizza store not just this one The defeated look on her face when he said that was almost worth the cost of admission. Yes, not the most epic of endings, I know, but what can you do? I don't know, OP. Personally, I think that ending was pretty good, you know? Everyone got the justice that that they deserved, and, you know, you got on with your day, and this horrible Karen was bad from your pizza store. Good stuff, no? I mean, maybe it might have been better had you got some sort of reaction out of her and, you know, had her actually arrested, but overall, pretty realistic ending to just say, no, you're bad for trespassing, Do not come here again and don't try and use the same techniques to get a free pizza time after time. How stupid do you have to be? Surely at that point, when you get the first credit for the pizza, you you take the pizza and you run. You go to a different store maybe and try that technique again. You don't try it at the same restaurant with the same manager, the same staff. They're going to remember your voice. They're going to know who you are. They're going to say, oh, just the other day, someone used the same technique and got some credit off me. I wonder if they're the same person. Oh, wait, yes, they obviously are. How dumb can you be? Take the free pizza and run. Now moving on to our next story. Entitled mother gets her parcels delivered to my home. This story is something that happened to me and my fiance fairly recently. We recently bought our first home together in a nice quiet area in the north of England. If you're not familiar with the British postal system, basically we get letters delivered through flaps in our front doors and parcels that are larger than the letterbox get handed to us if we are in. If we're not in, they get given to a neighbor and we can collect them later. If no one can take them, they get taken back to the depot where they sit or are returned to the sender. So, last month, we were just settling into our new home and my fiancé bought some clothes online for a local gym he wanted to join. I was in the house the day of the delivery, as I was expecting it, and I'm working from home. When the delivery lady arrived with the parcel, there were two. I thought nothing of it at first and put it in the garage for my fiancé to open later on. When he came in from work, 
he rushes to open his delivery like it was Christmas. And to his surprise, the second parcel was not for him. It had our address on, but no name. We were both confused at this point and thought it may be for one of the neighbors and that they would collect it later. Time goes by and we get a note through the door that reads, Hey, my son got his parcel delivered to your house. Call me on insert number here so I can come and collect it. Again, we thought it was a neighbor. So my fiance called the number for a woman to answer and say she'll be over shortly to collect the parcel. It turned out she lived across the town and her son chose our address to have it delivered to. Look, we thought this was weird, but we assumed it must have been a mistake. Anyways, we thought that was the last of it. But the next day, I get two more parcels for this lady's son. Again, with no name, but with our address on the package. At this point, I'm thinking it was a mistake on their part, or possibly they used to live here. Anyway, they came to collect their parcels and all was well. But guess what? More and more parcels over the next week arrive for this lady's son. At this point, I'm starting to get really annoyed by this, as even though I work from home, I can't leave meetings constantly to collect parcels that aren't even ours. So the next day, when the parcel lady comes, I just tell her, sorry, this isn't for me, and you're going to need to return it to the sender. So off she goes and takes the parcel back to the depot. A few hours later, I hear a knock at the door, and guess who? The entitled mother is standing there with her son. Now, I hate confrontation, so my memory of the conversation is a bit hazy, but she was furious that we denied her parcel and now she had to wait for it to be re-delivered. I told her she needs to get her parcels delivered to her own home, as it's weird and inconvenient for me. Like, I don't even know this lady. She then tells me it's easier for her to get them delivered to my home, as I'm always in and she isn't. Now look, maybe this would be possibly okay if I was friends with her and she'd asked me beforehand, but she lives across town and chose a random address for her parcels. Anyways, she leaves and I think that finally, maybe this is the end of the story, but parcels keep showing up and for the next week, I politely tell the parcel lady they aren't mine and to return to sender. After a week of doing this, I stopped getting the parcels, so I guess she finally got the message. How entitled must this woman have been to think it's okay to get parcels delivered to a random person's home that she doesn't even know because it's easier for her? I really hope she wasn't doing this to someone else after me. But it was satisfying to know that she would have to wait twice as long for her parcels because they were returned to sender. All right, now this one, guys, I'll be honest, I don't understand this at all because how would you ever like initially find the address of this random person? So OP in this in this story, that's the address that this Karen has eventually found of somebody who's willing to open packages and, and have Karen collect them. But what if you were doing this just from the off? Like when you first started doing this, You have to select a random address, right? I guess relatively near to you, but not too near that you know the person. How do you know? My point is, how do you know that the address that you're sending your packages to, the person who lives there isn't just going to take the packages as their own? Like, how do you know they're just going to hold them? Why would they not either take it as their own if they were a bit, you know, naughty, I guess, or just say, no, that's not mine and return it? How can you know for sure that the person is just going to hold the packages and wait for you to come there? I don't get it. And also, is it worth all this fuss just because you're not at home when the package might come to know that you're going to be able to get the package off the person who is at home? Like, as you can probably tell, I have a lot of questions here about this story. It's a very, very strange one, I think. I'm, I'm just a little bit shocked. I don't really know what's going on there at all. I mean, just looking at the comments here on Reddit, a lot of people, uh, a lot cleverer than me, are saying maybe there was something illicit or illegal in the packages. And that that was why this woman, this Karen, couldn't risk them going to her home. They were going to yours instead. And that would make a lot of sense. Because I'll be honest, guys, I don't understand why anyone would send packages to a different address. It makes no sense to me. Apart from if this might be the reason. If this is the reason, first of all, it makes complete sense. Second of all, OP, you're in danger, I reckon. Because, you know, you, you can't be too careful with this sort of stuff. And if you're accidentally carrying or it looks like you're ordering illicit substances or whatever... You could be in big trouble. So, um, yeah, I reckon call the police on this one. 
This is why I read the comments of the Reddit always after I read a story because everyone there is much more clever than me. And likewise, all you watching right now, you're also more intelligent than me. So if you guys have any better idea as to what might be going on here, please leave your comments, your conspiracy theories, your solutions to what OP could do down below. And uh, hopefully we can all find a, a common solution to what might be going on here because it's very perplexing for, for sure. Mum books the ice rink for the wrong day and expects us to share. For some background, I am an adult figure skater and I practice in a big group of other adults. There are skaters going from beginners up to former elite skaters. During Corona, the public rink we usually skate in has been closed and occasionally we've rented a private rink for an hour to skate. It's a lot more expensive than our ordinary practice, but you do what you must. Also, it's incredibly hard to get these time slots since the demand is so high. Skating is a corona safe sport, no worries. Only eight of us go on the ice and we all change outside. It's all correct by our laws. A few months ago, we'd rented the ice and arrived at our time. Since we are responsible and change outside, we couldn't see what was happening inside. Once me and one of the other skaters were ready to go onto the ice, we headed inside. But by the rink side, we found about 10 parents and something like 15 to 20 children aged three to six years. One of the mums, the entitled mum of this story, approached me with a worried expression. Are you the ones that rented the ice? Yes. I. Uh, you see, we were just informed that we booked the wrong day. Um, apparently we booked next week this time, but we're here today. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. What a bummer. The mum then looks at me and the other skater. Is it just the two of you? The others are still tying their skates on outside and only the two of us had come inside at this point. No, unfortunately, it's a whole group of us. Oh, can't we split the ice half and half? Uh, no, we're not here to joy skates. We're practicing seriously for several reasons. The first and foremost, it's incredibly dangerous. If I run into a child, I'm going to hurt it badly and I risk hurting myself too. But I mean, it's your kid. Do you want its face sliced up? Now, I would never, ever let my non-existing kids on the ice during a serious practice. Secondly, we rent the rink to be able to practice freely. Half the rink only makes it impossible to practice your program. And thirdly, children usually drag a lot of mud onto the ice, either on their overalls or the parents on their shoes when they walk onto the ice to help them when they fall. Dirt and mud is a big no-no for skaters. It'll wear them out quickly and we'll have to pay for resharpening. Okay, so at this point, I kind of felt sorry for them. We all screw up sometimes and it sucks. It can't be fun to reschedule an entire event like this. And I get that. It's what happens next that makes this story entitled. The mum goes to the other parents and I hear her saying silently, I guess you could come next week if that fits you. Then she goes to the children, points at us and says loudly, these people don't want you to skate. They want it all for themselves with a super accusing tone like we personally were responsible for her mistake. I ignore her and step onto the ice together with the other skater. This commotion already cost us a few minutes of our short time. I see one more from our group enter the rink and the entitled mum speaks to her too. I can't hear it though. This woman later confirmed to me that the entitled mum tried the same trick on her, guilting her into letting them share the ice and then even asked if the children, who were now all out of their skates, could at least walk out onto the ice to touch it. Since they were all wearing shoes and the mud rule still applies, my friend declines. Also, when the ice is newly resurfaced, it's crazy slippery and very hard to walk on. There's a big risk of falling over and hurting yourself. The rest of our group arrives and we start warming up. Half a minute later, the entitled mum opens the gate and lets two of the children run straight onto the ice. I wave at her to get them back off the ice and she waits purposely before she tells them to come back. Only they don't listen. She lets them slide around however much they want. Eventually, she has to walk out on her muddy shoes to pick them up and go back. Not a sorry, not anything. And that's that. Not the worst entitlement overall, but it still boils my blood. Especially how this entitled mum tried to blame us in front of the kids. Kids are usually very fond of looking at us skating, actually, since it looks cool. And when we skate publicly, we often show off whatever they want to see or teach them something. I hate to be accused of being the bad guy. 
Yeah, I completely agree with OP. Obviously, people can make mistakes, but you know, just admit that you've made your mistake. Yeah, it's annoying because you brought your kids down, loads of other parents. I'm not really sure, to be honest, how that is going on during COVID times. That's something to think about, given that, you know, OP has said that they only had eight people on the ice. But hey, forget about that. That might be a problem on its own. But yeah, once you realize that you've made a mistake and OP and her skaters have only got an hour on the ice, get out of there. It's annoying, but I'm sorry, you haven't booked it. It's next week. You can always come back next week. Just get out of there. Go to something else. Don't disrupt these guys' training. And don't try and, you know, half do it. Say, yeah, give us half the ice and you can just have half. If they've booked the entire rink, they're going to need the entire rink. I mean, come on. That's only fair. And now moving on to our second story of today's episode. He was white like everyone else. The other day, I was driving around town getting errands done. One of those was to get a new controller for my PC. I've got a friend who works at the GameStop in town, so I swung by. As I'm entering, I notice a woman with her child standing front and center at the counter with my friend at the register. I start to tune into the conversation. After all of this happened, my friend filled me in on the details. So I'll start right before I entered. The woman said, I'd like to get my money back for this game. My husband bought it from here last week, but it isn't the actual game my son wanted. Now, my friend who was working behind the register said, sure thing. The game was still in plastic wrap unopened and he started the process. Do you have the receipt for this purchase? No, why would I need that? It's 2021. Everything should be digital now. You should have a record of it. Uh, Yeah, that isn't something I have. Do you have a reward card with us? It would show the purchase. Karen takes out her reward card. My friend checks it and only sees the initial activation of the card on her account. This is also about the time I entered the store. I'm sorry, this doesn't have a purchase for this game. Well, it was taken out of my credit card. She then takes out her phone and shows my friend her full purchase history of her credit card. See, I made a purchase on my card. My friend visibly uncomfortably glances at the phone and sees an unitemized purchase at that store for a lot more than the purchase of a single game. I'm sorry, this doesn't show this game's purchase, just that this card was used to make a large purchase here, and I don't think I could use this as proof anyway. What I can do is put the amount on a rewards card for store credits. Now, this is when the Karen starts to raise her voice. What do you mean? So, because I spent more money here, I'm getting screwed? I want my money back. This is ridiculous. I want to speak to your manager. My friend informs her that there is no manager in the store, that they are the only current employee on site. She doesn't take that news very well, obviously. Then who do you call? You must have someone to call if this place blows up. My friend then begins to call local stores for their manager or see if one of the district managers happens to be there. Unfortunately, none pick up. I'm sorry, mom, I can't get a hold of another store's manager and our district manager is quarantined due to COVID. Why can't you call them then? If they're quarantined, all they should be doing is answering the phone. All I want is my money back. Okay, look, if I knew who you bought the game from, maybe I could verify it. Do you recall the employee's name? I don't. He was white like everyone else that lives in the States. Some guy, I don't know. Why would I need a physical receipt? It's 2021. Nothing should be physical. Look it up on your computer. I'm sorry, but I can't do that. The most I can do for you is give you the store credits. I had by now decided that I would stay in the store to keep an eye on things and ensure she didn't accuse my friend of anything, as well as keep an eye on the child who was not being attended to and was just wandering the store. Mind you, her son was just hanging out, seemingly unbothered by the fits his mother was causing. However, I tuned out the conversation as an advertisement for a game came on the store TV that made it very hard not to laugh at the parallel. The advertisement went, when someone thinks they're in the right, That's when the real cruelty in people starts to come out. So, what do you say? Are you really right? When I tuned back in, Karen was accepting the store credit in a tone as if she'd won the argument. She then went on a rant about this all being her husband's fault and that the store should be more open about options to return products. She took the digital currency and left with her son, who'd not said a word the entire time. My friend then turned and gave me an exasperated sigh. I was so done. I didn't even bother to ask if her or her husband had signed up for digital receipts. 
I mean, it's 2021 after all, right? Oh my God, guys, look, I'll be completely honest. If I was the employee in that situation, and look, I've said this multiple times now, I don't think that my sort of personality would do very well in retail dealing with customers like this. But honestly, you put me in that situation. I, generally, I should do that for a video. Go and work a day in retail and see what sort of customers, you know, come about because I don't think I'd do very well there at all. Pretty much what I'm saying is I think I'd lose my temper and lose my head and just say, you know what, I can't be bothered with this and just leave and tell the Karen to just get out of the store because like, how can you deal with someone like this? It's 2021 after all, you know? So uh, as the Karen says, we're in modern times now. You should realize that of course you're going to need some form of proof of a purchase. Receipts are still a thing. I mean, come on, what do you expect this person to do? Say, oh yeah, I remember your face from that time two weeks ago when your husband bought this. Like, it doesn't make any sense. How are they going to know that? It's just, a, it's just a mess, realistically. And I feel bad for the employee and I honestly feel bad for the kid because you know what is mad about the kid, yeah? Their lack of reality action is very telling because it just shows to me that um their mum does this sort of thing on the regular take me for example if i'm with my mum and um she's a pretty normal lady and she goes up and starts you know shouting at a store employee i'm taking note of that i'm going to myself what is going on here i'm not just wandering around the store willy-nilly just you know looking at the games i'll be getting involved even if i was like five i'd be like what is going on my mum's doing something that is out of the ordinary and the whole point is the kid doesn't care and is so oblivious to the fact that his mum's just ranting and just like you know what it's completely normal for me let's move on i feel bad for the kid the employee and ultimately every woman called karen because they're being tarnished by people like this and there you go you my friend have made it to the end of this absolute epic movie um first of all congratulations for making it this far that's pretty exceptional stuff uh if you didn't know this isn't actually my only entitled parents movie i've actually made a number of other ones and you can see four of them on screen right now click on any of them if you want to for whatever reason continue listening to entitled parents stories um, I, I would have thought by this point you would have had enough of them but you're still here so click on another one a massive thank you by the way for watching all of the movie that is crazy you're a legend it's much appreciated and if you are still watching right now comment down below redditor isn't wearing pants nice okay bye